Welcome to our Reflections for this week. I hope and pray that you know God's generosity as he continues to bless you in different ways. This week we have two reflections from members of Inch and Loose Valley Churches. Both reflect on different points in the early years of Jesus' life, which is a period of time that we can easily forget about because the information provided in the Bible is minimal. The first reflection focuses on a passage that we are used to reading at Christmas time, the visit of the wise men to Jesus. In this reflection, Ian Osborne thinks about the gifts that the wise men gave to Jesus, which happened when, according to some opinion, Jesus was a toddler, easily as much as two years old. Then, in our second reflection, Alison Levitska looks at a painting of Jesus as a young boy in the carpenter's workshop of his father Joseph, and what aspects of Jesus' ministry are highlighted through the brush marks of the artist. As we reflect on these two moments in the life of Jesus, may we continue to grow in our understanding of all that Jesus has done for us as we trust and follow him. So let us first listen to our reflection from Ian Osborne, a member of Inch Church, who will begin by reading Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 to 12. The reading is from the Gospel according to St. Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 to 12. Wise men inquire after Christ and follow the star to Bethlehem. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. And they said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea, For thus it is written by the prophet, And thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, art not the least among the princes of Judah, for out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. Then Herod, when he had privily called the wise men, inquired of them diligently, what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the young child. And when you have found him, bring me word again that I may come and worship him also. When they had heard the king, they departed and Lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them, till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. And when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. And being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed 
into their own country another way. Thanks be to God. When I hear Christmas music blaring out in shops and supermarkets months in advance of Christmas, it irritates me. I once had it during September. So you may wonder why I'm reflecting on a Christmas message when we are only just into a new year. Leading up to Christmas, I was asked to read the lovely passage telling the story of the wise men, <clears throat> and that made me think about what we give, what I give. The reading is from the Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 2, verse 11. And when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. But these were the gifts of kings. How can anything that you or I give begin to compare? When I think of our congregation at Inch, Throughout the year, we contribute whatever skills or talents that any of us may possess, which combined with the monetary offerings we make appear to suffice to enable us to muddle through another year. But does that come anywhere near of what we ask in return? For my own part, I'm not sure, but I know that when things seem at the most bleak, of when my mind is troubled, I ask for so much. Come to that, I probably do, even when I have no reasonable justification. I remember once pouring my heart out to a trusted friend, and Emma said, we don't always get what we want, Ian. Sometimes we can't understand why things happen. And we just have to have faith and trust in the Lord that it is what he has planned for us. More recently, I heard Evelyn allude to something similar, when in her reflections, she spoke of having to trust the Lord when prayers seemed to go unanswered. Both of these two special friends were correct. That brings me back to how can our offerings match those of the kings. I find some comfort in Christmas carols. My late father's favourite was In the Bleak Midwinter by Rosetta, which ends with a message for ordinary people like you or me. What can I give him, poor as I am, if I were a shepherd? I would bring a lamb. If I were a wise man, I would do my part. Yet what I can, I give him, give my heart. Another carol, The Three Kings, by Cornelius, tells the story of the wise men following the pointing star to Jordan and presenting the royal gift. It ends with a similar message for us mere mortals. Gold, incense, myrrh, thou canst not bring. Offer thy heart, the infant king. When all we have to offer is our unshakable trust, perhaps we give something as valuable as the gifts of kings. When we offer our hearts, might it be that in doing so, we are opening our treasures? And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Thanks be to God. Alison Levetska is now going to share a reflection 
on a painting that highlights aspects of Jesus' life. I want to talk to you today about a painting that I admire. I'm no expert on art, however I do like to look and study the artist's meaning in a painting. I especially like the pre-Raphaelite artists, who in some cases try to put forward a Christian message in their work. Firstly, let me start with a passage of scripture. John 1, 14. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. The painting I am looking at is Christ in the House of His Parents, the Carpenter Shop, by Sir John Everett Mealy, a pre-Raphaelite artist. When looking at the painting, we can see inside the carpenter shop, a familiar sight for a carpenter. The carpenter is working on a project. There are various tools around, some people helping or learning. The young boy has injured his hand, and someone is bringing water to bathe the injury, and the boy's mother is comforting him. What the artist is portraying is Jesus in the house of his earthly father, Joseph. He was learning the trade from his father and has injured his hand. The painting is full of symbolism. It is understood that the artist was not only depicting Jesus learning the trade of a carpenter as he grew up on earth with Mary and Joseph, but he's also pointing the audience to what Jesus was to endure for us later in his life, the crucifixion. The blood is on his hand and is stripped onto his feet, pointing to when he was nailed on the cross. Mary is comforting her son, and in the future would weep at the foot of the cross. Simeon says in Luke chapter 2 verse 35 that a sword would pierce Mary's soul. Jesus' cousin John is carrying a bowl of water to bathe the wound. This is symbolic of how later John would baptise Jesus at the start of his ministry. At his baptism in Matthew 3, verse 16 to 17, it says, He saw the Holy Spirit descending like a dove and alighting on him, and a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, whom I love. With him I am well pleased. The dove is shown in the painting resting on the ladder. The carpenter's triangle is there to symbolise the Holy Trinity. Father, Son and Holy Spirit. As well as pointing out what Jesus was to suffer for our sins, the artist has added sheep grazing on the grass. This can be seen through the window. Jesus is the good shepherd for his people. Jesus grew up learning a trade here on earth as a young boy, but the artist wanted to show us that not only did he come to earth as flesh and dwelt among us, but he died for us and rose again to become the shepherd of his people. And now a prayer which has been attributed to the Iona community. O Christ the master carpenter, who at the last through wood and nails purchased man's whole redemption, wield well your tools in the workshop of this world, that we who come rough hewn to your bench may there be fashioned to a truer likeness for your own name's sake. Amen. As we take the time to dwell on both of these reflections, shall we pray? Lord Jesus, we give thanks for the days that you spent on this earth, for those early years the time in Bethlehem and the time in Nazareth. For those days when you were cared for by your mother Mary and you grew in strength as children do. We recall the visit from the wise men and their gifts to you. We also remember those days when you lived in Nazareth with your parents, your brothers and sisters, and the wider group of family and friends. We remember the community that you were part of, and the trade you learned from your father, Joseph, such that you were indeed a skilled carpenter. 
These early years are indeed important to reflect on because they remind us that you can identify with us. The sufferings that we experience as well as the times of great joy and celebration. We know that you visited weddings and no doubt you were at funerals too. You knew all aspects of life and so we can indeed trust you with all our concerns for the people and the situations that we hold in our minds. Be with those who rejoice due to a moment of joy in their lives. Be with those who are thankful for events and life taking place. Be with those who mourn the loss of loved ones. Be with those who seek wisdom at a stage in their lives. Be with those who need healing and face times of uncertainty. Lord Jesus, we are so grateful to you and so we know that we can indeed trust you and that we can experience your love throughout our lives. Therefore help us to offer all that we can to you, especially our unshakable trust as we continue to live out our faith. Bless us and show us ways that we can serve you as you lead us forward. Continue to fashion us so that step by step we become more like the people that you have called us to be. People more like you, Jesus our Lord and Saviour. Amen. Next week, the theme for our community space will be stairs and ladders as we think about Jacob. So please send in any photos, videos or messages connected with this theme. Let us continue to remember to keep our trust in Jesus as we sing the hymn, All My Hope on God is Founded.
So let us continue to trust in Jesus and give to him all that we have to offer as we remember all that he has done for us. And until we meet again, take care, stay safe, and may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Amen.